Hi guys, welcome back. So our baby Neil had reported the Q2 earning 2021 after market. So let's give an update. It's been a while. Let's see if everything is up to our expectation on Neil. So the earning is pretty much a double beat a 53% increase year over year and beating estimates by 36% with the quarter loss of $0.07 per share. So Neil is getting closer and closer into turning positive into profit and that would be quite an important milestone to achieve for an early startup company and also it was only last year i remember the second quarter earning of 2020 that it was turning positive margin also an important milestone and the share price had responded well to that so only four quarters later we are getting very close into making positive profit already quite fast progress delivery of 21,000 which is more than double of last year in the same quarter of 10,000. It was just a few months ago when the whole world was quite fearful about the chip shortage problem. There were analysts saying that they could still see 100% growth year over year for NEO regardless of the chip problem. And that was when the market got more calm and the share price recovered. But now we are beating the 100% gain expectation. That shows an over-exaggeration on the chip shortage fear and also the good execution level from the management team to overcome the problem. And the price movement recently had shown that new it's really quite crash resistant because we have seen a big crash for a lot of the Chinese stocks. Even the mega cap, the big tech companies were falling like rocks. Not to mention a lot of the growth stocks and medium small caps in the US market also. And the storm between the US-China politics hitting all the Chinese stocks listed in the US stock exchange. So with all this happening, NEO had been quite crash resistant. Right now it had recovered most of the drop from that correction and now it's been consolidating for a few weeks already you see within a very small narrow range. And I remember on this day, July 27, when the Hang Seng Index dipped to 25,000 and I called out a golden dip because everything was crashing, falling fast. It did a very nice backtest to the 250MA to backtest the support at 38. I called out on the Discord too. I think 38 is a strong support for NEO. So I expected it to get supported and bounce back when it reached 38. And we can see that it was actually quite a strong and fast recover from that. So I think this back test on the 250MA is quite healthy and good back test to confirm the support and confirm the uptrend we are still in. So then on Monday, two days ago, I also replied Neil just needs a catalyst and I think any dip would be good to buy. So would this earning be the good catalyst then? It could be, but I also think we would have more catalysts coming up because at this point, Neil had been going through a really long correction already and also it had shown that it had outperformed many other stocks, most of the other stocks on the US and Chinese market. So that's why I think after this long consolidation, I think it just needs a few good catalysts for us to turn on the power again. So let's see if we have more coming catalysts for NEO then. First of all, a lot of people are looking forward to the ET7 because everyone has high expectation on the delivery number for ET7 and it should be resulted in the Q1 or Q2 earning of 2022. And the share price usually would reflect that a few months earlier. So that would be towards the end of this year or the end of Q3 to Q4. Second one, I expect them to release a cheaper model for the sedan ranging from 150 to 250,000 RMB so then they can cover a bigger market, the bigger demographic in China. They could be younger demographic. The entry level for NEO 
for them to grow the loyalty to the brand first. But this would at the same time be a challenge for the management team for them to increase their operation level. Next one is the brand export. I know they're doing it right now. It's a work in progress. They're testing water before a bigger expansion into more countries at a larger scale. So at this stage, the exploration stage would be quite critical and we can start to see some results pretty soon I think and as I addressed before I think brand export would be one of the important strategies for the Chinese government in the near future so this would align with the Chinese government strategy and would gain more support from the government in this way especially it would be the first high-end car brand export to the world that is an important milestone for the country as well and next, I would expect to see more government support coming up. And by this, I don't mean by financial support, but more importantly, the integration of the whole ecosystem, clean energy or infrastructure that they're building around the whole cleaner energy ecosystem. Because clean energy is one of the most important plan for the Chinese government. And it would be a very, very long term planning. And right now it's still at the exploration stage where they are trying to figure out many things at the same time, especially thinking of the clean energy supply chain. Clean energy is a huge plan, huge revolution, huge industry that involves a lot of different parts and components with a very long supply chain. It is now raising a lot of questions, a lot of exploration, a lot of things yet to break through. How to make sure the clean energy is enough for consumers usage for such a large scale. 1.4 billion population using electricity, would it be enough of supply? How to manage different people's user behaviors? So then there could be more energy stored at the time that is sufficient for emergency backup and how to make use of the energy stored. When it's needed, how to distribute them between local government and provincial government etc. All these questions would be very very hard to solve and still takes time to be solved. And I think that NEO would be one of the key parties to help explore the whole big plan of clean energy in China. Because not only they have the leading experience of EV in China, but also they have the unique ecosystem with the BAAS and battery swap station ecosystem. And I think that might be a way that is very critical, very important to help solve the energy problem to better manage the energy supply chain. Because I think the battery swap station would make it easier for them to control what time they use the most electricity to charge the batteries. So it's easier to manage the usage of electricity, better control of the mass usage, and also it could at the same time turn into a battery or electricity storage for emergency use when it's needed. So I would expect the government to integrate NEO with the whole ecosystem and infrastructure built around the whole clean energy industry, the clean energy supply chain. So I expect to see more and more government cooperation. Like a few months ago, we see NEO and Sinopec enter strategic partnership and plan to build up to 5,000 battery swap stations, the second generation. So the biggest oil company and government-owned company, of course. And two days ago, we saw that another government-owned large corporation is also signing a strategic agreement with NEO to integrate more resources for EV supply chain to set up the research and development center for the Chinese EV industry. And further explore the smart transportation. So I would expect to see more and more of this kind of cooperations with government owned entities because they would be trying to solve much bigger problems together. So more integration of NEO into the government's infrastructure plan is good to enhance NEO's business model and reinforce the moat of the battery swap station. So I do see that with this trend going on and my expectation on NEO, I would think we would see more and more catalyst, good things coming up for NEO. And the last thing is I would be happy if they can make their own chip in the future. 
so they don't need to rely on any US companies like Nvidia or Intel, Mobileye and so forth because with the US and China relationship and the big strategy on the Chinese government to develop the Chinese chip industry, I think this would be quite important strategy for NIO as well. If they can plan ahead, I think it's a good insurance for the future, but maybe it doesn't have to be now. Just something to keep in mind for the management team in the future. So that is my expectation on my baby Neo and I am still very bullish on Neo overall and it did not fail my expectation. It had been doing so well outperforming most of the other Chinese stocks or other US smaller to medium caps. I am already proud of Neo and I think by the time that when Chinese stocks and the medium cap sector start to rise, it will do great again. Okay, now that's it for what I want to share with you. Let me know what you think about the earning and my analysis. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a big, big like and write me a great comment. And I'll see you in my next video. That's it guys. Hope you can find my videos helpful. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a big like. Thank you.